What's going on, guys? All right, I made a new uh, little manual collage under one of my glass tables. I need a little more space for my uh, for my uh, Goodwill finds and whatnot. I was going to a uh, little thing. I had some manuals in, and I found some old uh, Funko Land manuals that Funko Land used to. Uh, put with their games. Now these are made by different companies and whatnot, but most of them, uh, it was a company called USA Direct Incorporated. Um, and let's see, do do do, yeah, but these were uh, used by Funko Land in the early 90s, you can see in 1993. And, uh, try to get a good angle here. So this is Wanderers from Ease, that was uh, for the Super Nintendo. It'll give you a little detail of the game, how do you, you know, use the controls, and I'll tell you a little different things, little different hints and stuff about the game. Here is uh, Zelda for the NES, that's uh, 93 on there, it tells you a little story there. The Triforce is a legendary set of golden triangles with mystic powers, Ganon, the Prince of Darkness, sent his army to army to capture the Triforce who could rule the land. Well, we all know that story. But it's funny because it'll tell you like a little bit how to play the game. Like completing this game takes time and the proper use of each item. Everything you find has a use at some point in the game. And it says here are the items you need, blah, blah blah blah. And it tells you what the items do and whatnot. So these are pretty good manuals. It's just one little card. Some of them are actually stickers too. I guess you could stick them on the back of the game or something, I don't know. Um, and they'll, you know, they'll say, like, listen to what, listen to what the people tell you, their information comes in handy. I don't remember talking to too many people in Zelda. But, uh, yeah, you know, some of these are cool. Here we go, Metroid. An unknown alien being is being held by space pirates. If their attempts to reproduce this being are successful, it can mean the end of civilization as the galaxy knows it. Unless you, Samus Aran, a space hunter suited with surgically strengthened robotics, can infiltrate the enemy fortress and destroy the alien life form known only as Metroid. All right, and then it tells the controls and says what to watch for. There are literally hundreds of power-ups in this game, like the long beam, the ice beam, the wave beam, the screw attack, the high jump boots, bombs, missiles, energy tanks. Bomb the floor in certain areas to reveal hidden passageways. Use a freeze beam to freeze your enemies, then use them as steps to reach areas normally too high. Write down the password to continue your game at another time. That's a match for 93. Here's Kid Icarus. That's a long one. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, in the peaceful kingdom of Angeland, the good and beautiful goddess Palutina brought light to mankind. But then there was Medusa. Great. I remember that. I remember the code. I, I memorized it when I was young. Stages. To save Angel Land and Palutina, you need to fight your way through four stages. Stage one, the underworld. The daring escape of Pit. The underworld is filled with mazes, glaciers, and lava pools. You must get past Medusa's watchmen and get to the overworld. I never knew that stage one was the underworld. I actually never even knew what stage 1 was in Kid Icarus, to be quite honest. Stage 2 is the overworld. No, I do, do know what that was. The once peaceful kingdom of Angel Land is now inhabited by Medusa's monsters. Get through the glaciers. Oh, I hate those places. Cross the seas and climb the mountains to get to the sky world. And then you get to sky world. Wow, and then Medusa's chamber. Yeah, four levels. Yeah with a crazy dungeon at the end of each one. And the last one is ridiculous. It'll take you a long time if you didn't know what you were doing. Kid Icarus and Metroid came out on the same day when they both were released. 
and they were both equally challenging games, both with mazes, and I mean, both equally awesome in their own right. But I, I think Metroid did outsell Kinnikris by like four to one or six to one or something. Here's Lagoon. Mind about that? One of my during my Super Nintendo RPG kick when I first started playing them. That was a good game. Actually, you know what? I think Lagoon sucked. I think that was like just a really bland game. Really <laughs> bland RPG. It was kind of like a uh, Mystic Quest almost. There's a there's Maniac Mansion. The mission to lead a team of teenagers through a mansion filled with strange and evil things to save a cheerleader from its basement. Why, you ask? Why not? Once again, I didn't know that was the plot of Maniac Mansion. First of all, you have to assemble your team. Huh. Well, that was a fun game. Maniac Mansion, I learned what the word item meant in that game game. I said, what's that word? Because I was fairly young at the time. I didn't know what the word item was. And my friend said, that means like thing, like a thing. I said, oh. So for like a year or so, whenever I saw that word item, I said thing. I thought thing. I took my things and then I finally just was like item. But, you know, I was like six years old at the time, five or so. Oh, well, sorry about that weird story. <laughs> uh, yeah, Maniac Mansion. And let's see what this last one is. So this is what I was telling you about. Some of these are stickers. Somebody's phone number on there. Who knows what that was. Um, spy versus Spy. Welcome to the zany Madcap Adventure. Spy versus Spy. That was a fun game. I remember renting that as a kid, and then that's why I went back and bought that from Funkoland. So yeah, those were those were like a little sample of the manuals that Funkoland gave with their games, actually. So, so you know, when these games were... That just shows you the effort that that company made to resell their games. And of course, the early 90s were an awesome time for uh, used video game stores. People had those games, they wanted to trade them in. People were getting becoming more and more addicted to video games. They needed a way to make money for more games, so why not trade in their games for more stuff? And Funkland was the first people to do it. I happened to live in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and actually the first city where it was started, and I lived a few blocks down from the dude who started the company's parents' house. He had actually lived at his parents' house for many, many years, and uh, he sold uh, the games out of his basement. So you could actually go to his house and buy the games out of his basement. And we always knew about him in the neighborhood. His parents had owned a uh, house on the bluffs overlooking the river right there in Ian Prairie. But, you know, three or four years later, he was actually bought out by well, a bigger computer chain. I think it was like EB, EB Games or Babbage's. Or so. He was bought out by somebody big, and I mean, he made, he made off a bunch of money. But, you know, the first couple years of Funkoland were really awesome. You could go in there, I mean, they had just games, all games up, they had the Neo Geo there you could play, I mean, it was a really cool place to go, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed going to Funkoland until the late 90s. It got pretty shitty after that, up until it got bought out by GameStop, but, you know, it was always a really cool place, and, uh, you know, we always looked, looked forward to going to, to uh, Funkoland. I go in there and just buy all these games, you know, 93, 94, 95, on my bike up there every weekend. But, you know, things aren't like they used to be, and, the, you know, stores like that just really don't exist anymore. That's why I give a lot of my, uh, there's a play and trade, is a video game store that's out there right now, and I give a lot of my money to them, because they actually will buy your NES games and hold them for you, and they'll sell them at reasonable prices. Playing trade is the closest thing I've seen to Funko Land since the since then. So, if you want to go to a used game store and buy games, go to Play and Trade, don't go to GameStop. Because, you know, GameStop will not make an effort for anything. And like I said, Funkoland, you know, they went as far as to make manuals for their games to sell them. You'll never see that again. You'll see people put them in a plastic box and, you know, it, it doesn't even have a game logo on it. <laughs> Alright guys, well thanks for watching my vid, I'll see you soon.